motivation to help with this game today. Uh, and it should be interesting. Again, these two teams, Patriot League's number one preseason team in Boston University and the Eagles out of the ACC off that strong win against Rutgers, as we said. It's worth noting some of the players that we will not see in this game. First for BU, Caitlin Weimer is out, the junior. She was hurt late in the fourth quarter in the game against St. Joseph's. So Weimer, who's averaging 13 points a game out for BU. On the other side for BC, as we see Wagner knock down a shot from deep and a good 2-0 start. BC is going to be without Tiana Todd today, Josh, the freshman who was injured a couple of days ago. They'll also be without Kayla Lazama, the first year from Boston. So that's a bench piece that the Eagles will be down as well. Yeah, and Todd has been a huge contributor in her freshman season. Nice driving bank shot to tie the game here. But the loss of Weimer, she is one of the best post players, not only in New England, but statistically thus far in the country this season. The fact that she's out, kind of a surprise to us, that really changes the complexion of what BU tries to do. Here's Maria Gakdang, and that is off the mark on the shot. It was Lauren Davenport who made the runner on the other end for Boston University. Terriers at four and three on the season. They had won four games in a row before falling to St. Joe's last time out down in Philadelphia. And that missed there by Chris. She's the one taking the place of Weimer. There's Gakdang inside. Little short, though, after a good setup from JoJo Lacey. Watch for BU to be patient offensively. They don't mind taking all 30 seconds off of the shot clock. Very experienced team, especially in the backcourt. Well, one thing that Joanna Burnaby back to me talked with us before the game about was just the, the length in terms of time that Boston College is going to have to defend today. Durant inside, got it back, and then couldn't finish on the second effort. That's what Maria Gakdang does best. She can alter shots with the best of them on the interior. And already as a sophomore, one of the leading shot blockers in program history. There's Mayer, first points for Taina Mayer. The assists were there, the steals were there. Now the points are coming as well for the freshman. She scored 10 points in three of the last five games. And another turnover. This is where Boston College has been strong. Turn it over as much as any team in the ACC and Daly not there from three. You got a Boston University team that shoots the three point shot very well, statistically top 30 in the country. Boston College, that is not their strength. They like to score inside and in transition, but those three point shots like the one you just saw from Daly, that is not the team's fort. Johnson got it stripped from behind, but managed to get it back. It was Daly who made the play from behind Johnson, but it deflected right off the backboard, and the Patriot League preseason player of the year is on the board for the first time. Seven to shoot for Wagner. Dontavia had it roll off the rim. And then a foul on the rebound to tip. Will go against Gakdang. But here's Caitlin Weimer. Five double-doubles in seven games for the Terriers this season prior to today. Take a look in the top 25 in the nation in blocks and in rebounding. Obviously, subtracting a talent like that is a huge loss. Tiana Todd, look at what she's done here at the beginning of her BC career. Great ball is good from Maggie Pina, the senior from Westchester, Pennsylvania, shooting 53% from behind the arc. 15th in the country, Maggie Pina. A really nice game at St. Joe's and a very close loss they had against a good Atlantic 10 team on Thursday. Turnaround try, Ali Van Timmeren, who's off the bench here in place of Gakdang. Finish at the rim and then run away. This will go back to Boston College. Here's how BU tied the game at four. Almost a steal there from behind by Daly. But bounds right into the hands of the Patriot League's preseason player of the year. And then again, this is what they do well. They shoot the three-point shot at a 
a huge clip, almost 40% as a team, Eric, from beyond the arc. Three ball to answer. JoJo Lacey, no, but an offensive rebound. And that matchup, Boston College on the offensive glass, BU on the defensive glass, is going to be a really fascinating look. Boston College is one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. They're 26th in terms of offensive rebounds per game. They're seventh nationally in offensive rebound rate versus BU, which is top 26 in defensive rebounds. And there's a three ball, and the Terriers are reining him in from behind the arc. That was Alex Guianeros, the sophomore, with the triple. Lacey to answer and does. So that ends a little Edo run for Boston University. Yeah, and that's what BC really needs more of from JoJo Lacey as they get a turnover here quickly. Eagles get the steal. Mayer with the offensive rebound. By the way, beg your pardon, it was Lauren Davenport on the last three for BU on the other end. So five points early for Davenport. But if you're looking at that BC offense, nice move by Wagner. Woo! Slashing got it out of the Two points for Dontavia Wagner. Nine points seven times already this year. This is what the Eagles do. They get steals, they create turnovers. Can they capitalize on them? Becomes the big question. Turnovers have helped get the Eagles back in it. It's a one point game with 429 remaining here in the first quarter. Eagles four points, second chance. They've scored off turnovers. And Lacey knocking down the three. With the award-winning Geico mobile app, our Bill customer... has joined the call. Hey, Bill, we'll just... Hi, guys. Uh, do we have Julia on the line, too? Okay, hey, we'll... Hey, we'll, sorry. Okay, we'll... we'll you, uh, so, um, right. The award-winning Geico app. Nine lives and you didn't value any of them. Bounty hunters. All right, let's get it over with. I need your help. What happened to your other eight lives? Watch! 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 I am not really a math guy. The wishing star who get me my lives back. Pray for mercy from boost in boots. Mmm, espresso. Puss in boots. Only in theaters. We need PG. There's never been a better time to get away. With a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Hurry in to get our best deals of the season. Get in and get away. Get 0% APR on the 2023 Tucson, plus zero payments for 90 days. Visit buyhyundai.com today. No one loved hot chicken more than my friend Sam. And this juicy, hot, spice to order Dave's hot chicken would have been his favorite of all time if it wasn't for his other passion, driving with his head out the sunroof. Woo! <laughs> Stick your head out, Wiggles! Wiggles, no! Please don't mess up and die before you eat Dave's. Looking for the perfect gift for the one you love? The Diamonds Direct gift guide is here to help. Find a stunning array of wedding and anniversary bands, diamond fashion, gemstone jewelry, classic diamond studs, tennis bracelets, and more. With Diamonds Direct's unmatched selection, you are sure to find the perfect gift to celebrate the one you love. Plus, enjoy our lifetime warranty included with each purchase that will keep your gift sparkling for years to come. Make an in-person appointment or browse our gift guide online at diamondsdirect.com. And do this, don't give up thing all by myself. This whole fight, this journey thing is not a solo venture. This is something that requires support. The V Foundation Stuart Scott Cancer Research Fund honors Stuart's legacy by awarding grants to scientists who are addressing racial disparities in cancer outcomes and providing opportunities to researchers from diverse backgrounds. ESPN and the V Foundation are proud to support this fund in Stuart's honor. You can support as well by visiting v.org slash Stuart. ESPN family of networks all week celebrating V-Week and 
raising money for some very important causes, Eric. We encourage all those who are able to give what you can. It is such great work that ESPN does. It really is. Great that they are able to make every game part of it this week and make it ever present. There's two free throws for Andrea Daly, the sophomore who's really played well here recently for Boston College. She started the last five games. She's posted 10 points four times this season. We've talked so much this year about Boston College players needing to make a jump after losing five starters from a year ago. And Bailey has certainly done that. Offensive rebounds continue to be a factor for the Eagles. And Dontavia Wagner has an early four. It's a 9-0 Boston College run to take a three-point lead. And you were talking about players making a leap. Dontavia certainly goes into that category. Her, JoJo Lacey, and Andrea Daly all moving into the starting lineup this year after hardly really seeing the court very much a season ago. It was the literal and figurative leap. The offensive yeah. rebound Whoa. and the step. And somehow... That one goes, and yep, that's about the right reaction from JoJo Lacey. Mm. That ball bounded about five or six feet up into the air off the rim and straight through the net. That's like a horse shot. Someone must have turned a fan on at the right moment, steered it back on course, right? I was talking about it earlier as BC almost forces another turnover. Part of this 12-0 run, a couple of three-point makes from JoJo Lacey. First, Ontavia Wagner doing what she does best, the industrious work inside. Second chance points and two three-pointers for Lacey. She was, as I was talking about, she's the one real candidate to make long-range shots in this BC lineup. Daly almost had the steal. Davenport's try was not there. And BC is once again on the run. It certainly sped up BU as this game has gone on talked about early how the Terriers are content to run their offense sometimes but Boston College has certainly sped them up and that is a turnover and that is a sixth turnover for Coach Graves team it's going to be interesting to see how the turnovers played out because if you look at the Boston College side of it the Eagles turn it over a lot and they also create a lot of turnovers BU is much more middle of the pack lower in both categories so which way was going to win out and so far the Eagles have created them in well, a big way. With that experienced point guard in Sydney Johnson you don't expect a turnover like the one we just saw. She's one that Coach Graves is thinking if I've got the ball in her hands we're generally going to be protecting possessions pretty well. BC gives one right back. Carriers have not scored in three minutes of game time. They have four turnovers over that three minute window. AC got a piece. Boston College, good energy in the first quarter here. And I know that Coach McNamee was a little worried about that energy on a Sunday afternoon coming off of a big win against a Big Ten team. Down a player today with Tiana Todd getting hurt in practice. Yeah, this game, where it sits on the calendar, and that is an offensive foul called away from the ball on Marin Durant, the senior. It's a great season Patriot League defensive player of the year. This run that Boston College has been on, they have just played stifling defense. Chance for Gakdang, decides to take the shot, missed. On the rebound, we had a couple of bodies on the floor. First, Liz Sheehan was down, and then one of the referees, Linda Miles, lost her footing as well. It's a BU possession down the other way. Carriers coming inside quickly, and Gakdang got a piece, and oh, that's a great job by Taina Mayer to throw it off Durant and in the process establish possession again for the Eagles. That now eight turnovers for BU. On the other end, this little collision there between the BU player and the ref gave a good look to Dontavia Wagner. Got bottled up. Linda Miles showing she's tough. Thumbs up, she's good to continue. And Timmerin for three. It's a little bit strong, rebound. Gakdang was there along with Durant and it comes to BU. Terriers on the run, Johnson high off the window is too strong. But Liz Sheehan 
good read on the rebound. And BU will get another chance. Sheehan again charging into Lacey. And the foul will go against JoJo Lacey. Well, you were talking a lot about the rebounding prowess of BU, especially on the defensive end. It's Boston College that's been doing it on the offensive glass. Maria Gekting battling there with Durant who pulled it away. And I, I do wonder, Eric, Yes, BU's rebounding stats are very good thus far this season, but you've taken away their best rebounder by far with Weimer being Perks. And how does that impact this game? Thus far, it's been a big advantage for Boston College, I would say. And it's a circumstance where, first of all, the Eagles are a good rebounding team, too. The strength of BU's rebounding is defensive. The strength of the Eagles' rebounding is offensive. Yep. So that becomes a little bit of a different factor than when you have both sides really good defensive rebounding teams. Here's Mayer for three, and that is good. And of course, when you make shots, there's no defensive rebounds to be had. And that's probably the next evolution of Taina Mayer's game, making the outside shot on a somewhat consistent basis. The way that she's been able to contribute, uh, distribute, and score on the penetration, if she can hit that, look out ACC. So solid to begin her freshman campaign and continuing to grow into her role. 6.5 seconds remaining in the quarter and that is out of bounds to Boston College. Another block by Maria Gekting. But before that, here's Mayer. Confident stroke, good looking shot. Only been making about 28% of her three point attempts coming in. And a double dribble call in the backcourt. We were talking about it in the open, though. In that Rutgers win, the stat line that she put up is as complete as any you'll see. 14, 11, 5, and 5. That would have counted. It's off the mark. Mayor with five more points today. A couple of rebounds and a stat stuffer like effort again. Boston College, a 19-12 lead after one here in this Green Line rivalry. At the end of that first quarter, these are the numbers you've been talking about. BU's strength on the defensive glass, Boston University, crashing the offensive bird, boards. The Eagles, a 19-12 lead. As we start the second. And it's Daly spinning into traffic. Double team was there. Still trying to go up, and that one's blocked away. And that's one of those learning moments as a young player. If the double team's there, somebody's got to be open on the other end. Yeah, you're not going to get that shot up in over four different arms, which is what Andrea Daly was trying to do. How about another takeaway for BC? And it's Wagner out front. Oh, the unselfish pass and the foul. Eric, it's been over six minutes now since Boston University has made a field goal. And a lot of times they haven't even gotten a shot attempt off because of steals like that. Unselfish, as you said, although I think Wagner had a pretty good look at a layup that she decided just to take it herself. I don't know if I'd be that unselfish, but... Honestly, I don't know that Coach McNamee would have asked her to be that unselfish. <laughs> you got two, take two. And it ends up costing BC yeah. two points. <laughs> Terriers running the offense a little bit deeper into the timer, and that is Johnson on the drive to the basket. It is, as we've said, V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 
bit.ly once again slash donate and 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Couple of misses at the line, but the putback for there, Sam Chris, the freshman, their first two points of the game. A little snap that field goalless drought. Crisp, as we've talked about, taking Caitlin Weimer's spot in the middle today. Doing it on both ends of the court, BU. Much more limited attempts because of the turnovers, but the Terriers actually are shooting a better percentage than Boston College from the floor. 5 of 12 versus 7 of 21 for BC, but obviously the 9 more attempts for the Eagles. 8 more attempts now, and a 3-pointer good! Liz Sheehan, the senior, who is just one of seven from behind the arc to start the year, brings it back to a one-point game. Six in a row for BU. Take a look at what Marin Durant does so well. Preseason Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year. And then BU, they can fill it up from long range, even off the bench. Seems like they have withstood that early Boston College uppercut. You know, we were talking about it early on. This is, I think, Eric, on paper, this is a pretty even matchup. BU, a very experienced team, one that beat Boston College last season on their home court. BC, with all its young, talented players, they're really going to be challenged here this afternoon. Terriers, who finished third in the Patriot League last year, 12-6 and six in the league. Just with 17 wins overall. There's a nice slip by Durant, and the Terriers are back in the lead. Ellie Van Timmeren almost intercepted that pass. How it just eluded her arms. Durant, who's such a great defensive player, that's her first basket of the week. Didn't score in their loss at St. Joe's. And it's an 8-0 start to the second quarter for Boston University. And Tamarin, that was off. How does Van Timmeren not get this pass? Let's take a look. Oh, just a hair late getting there. Yeah, I'm sorry, really nice job by Durant to catch it and then almost hide it. BU's been much more effective at running their offense here in the second quarter, Josh, and it's made a big impact and add 10 points. 10-0 run for BU to start the second. And that after they went six plus minutes without making a shot. But that is their best shot maker, Sidney Johnson. Four-year starter. Mayer straight on. Foul before. Offensive against BC. And that's a big one, notably, because it is Gakdang, and that is the second foul on Maria Gakdang. So again, we've talked about some of the injuries for Boston College and the foul situation just magnifies itself in, in that circumstance. And that is two on Boston College's big inside. Yeah, and now without Gekdang, Boston University, they can feast inside. That's exactly what they do. They went right against an undersized five in Van Timmeren. And a couple of layups here in this run for Marin Durant. Runner is good for Dontavia Wagner. And that is Boston College's first points of this second quarter. And an early H for Wagner. Mm. BU trying to attack again, right? Inside the paint with Durant. That time just a little off on the entry pass. Otherwise, she may have had another layup. You wonder if... Boston College is going to think about bringing in the freshman Ali Carmen here to just be able to try to match the size that BU has. Because with Gakdang having those two fouls, it's going to be a problem to defend the interior. It's Daly inside. Nice catch and good for Daly who has four. Boston College able to score one at the rim that time. They love Andrea Daly's athleticism. Really able to use that athleticism 
to establish the position. Now she does it again, and Eric. Got it. Eagles needed to spark inside with Gakdang on the bench with two, and Daly provides it. Once was nice, twice is delightful. Two in a row. Little body bump there. Sam Crisp gave that. No problem. Finishing. Going to the other side of the rim through the contact was Andrea Daly. This has been a game of runs. I was going to say, we had BU who led 10-4. Then the Eagles got up 19-12. BU went on a run to take a 24-19 lead, and now the Eagles are up by two. Seven for Daly. Falling away, crisp with an early four. You could just see the moment Maria Gakdang left this game, Coach Graves said, we're going inside every possession, and that's what they've done. Straight on Lacey. Got it! JoJo Lacey with nine early. So this game certainly has not been short on offense. Two teams that both average under 67 points a game. But the offense has been there so far. That one is too far. That's the seventh turnover on Boston College. Johnson pull up was short all the way, but it's caught clean by Lauren Davenport, but then thrown right back to Wagner. One of the nation's leaders in steals. Lacey steps in. This time on the three. Bit of a heat check. She's hit three of them. Good look, but a quick shot. And that's going to be a foul on Van Timmeren. Reaching for it with 4.05 remaining here in the second. Offenses have come to life. BU shooting 50% from the floor. Started a 10 0 run in the second, but the Eagles have clawed back. And it's a three-point lead for Boston College. With the award-winning Geico mobile app, our Bill customers... has joined the call. Hey, Bill, we we'll just... Hi, start... guys. Uh, do we have Julia on the line, too? Okay, hey, what would you... We'll... sorry. Okay, we'll... we'll... You... Um, I... right, the award-winning Geico app. Oh, hey there, darling. Let me count on you. The road is long and I'm scared. Equinox to Silverado. Chevy EVs are for everyone, everywhere. Asking what will Pop-Tarts do is how you get from toast and jam to that's my jam. From Sunday to Sunye. So, like, what will Pop-Tarts do here? Yeah, that feels right. Crazy good. What's more intimidating when it's time to pop the question than picking out an engagement ring? Hi, I'm Hadley Perry from Perry's Diamonds and Estate Jewelry. Perry's can help ease your mind and make the process easier and more pleasant with our selection of new and vintage engagement rings from a half carat to eight carats and 10 graduate gemologists on staff to help you find the perfect ring. Plus, our 12-month no-interest financing will make it easy to pay for as well. How can she say no when you present her a ring from Perry's? Carnegie Boulevard across from South Park Mall. Better luck next time. But I haven't even thrown yet. You threw good money away when you bought those glasses. Next time, go to America's Best, where two pairs and a free exam start at just $79.95. Can't beat that. Can't beat this, either. Book an exam today at americasbest.com. Three-point lead for Boston College, and JoJo Lacey off to a strong start. Three triples so far. We've been talking about it. If BC's going to get some perimeter offense, it's probably Lacey the best candidate to do it. Couple in the first quarter, and during this most recent run. 
Little jab step and let it fly. JoJo, her first season getting real extended playing time, averaging 10 points a game. But again, if she's making outside shots, this is a different Boston College de team to have to defend. Yeah, that's a situation where you really have to go beyond the numbers because coming in, shooting just 29% from behind the arc, that's not going to jump out. But as you said, the point, it, it's really her first year getting significant minutes, needing to be a piece that's relied on offensively, which is obviously a much different category. Here's Pina for three, and that's good! Second triple for Maggie Pina, the senior, and we're once again tied, 29 apiece. Yeah, she says, JoJo, I'll show you what I can do from out here, the 53% three-point shooter. Wow, it's, it's raining triples at Connie Forum. BU 4 of 6, BC 5 for 11. Couple from there too. Nice denial on the entry pass by Wagner. As you talked about, one of the best stealing the basketball in the country. And that one is out of bounds. It will stay here with BC. You God. don't know, sorry Eric, you don't know that this is sustainable for a full season, but she's averaging four steals a game. Daily elbow, no. We said it, you know, it's really an interesting challenge as she becomes a relied upon offensive piece in addition to that defensive presence that we've seen over the last couple of years because, you know, you love those steals, you need those steals, but you really can't foul. So you have to learn how to play in that circumstance. It's a great chance to learn though, if you're a player like Wagner. That was uh, Mingo, that was off the mark, and then that shot counting for BU. I thought that was after the timer, but they say it was okay, and then off the offensive rebound, Maggie Pina with her third three-pointer. It's almost like Boston College stopped playing, thinking that the play was dead, but it wasn't. Shot released in time. Here's Mayer, kick out Wagner. Got her defender in the air and then missed the floater. Van Timmer in that time with the offensive board. With the three-pointer no good from Daly. Thirty-two apiece, two minutes to go in the second quarter. Durant, spin, got the double team. Pina was open, and Pina raining him in. Yeah, you can't give her an open look. She'll make you pay. We've talked about how lethal she is, and she's putting it on display here in the second quarter. And that is an offensive foul. This was earlier. We talked about near the end of the shot clock, and... Uh, you can see that Durant did beat it. Yeah, that led to the most recent three-pointer, or one of the most recent three-pointers by Maggie Pina. Right after we cut away from that, she made that shot, and then another one, the next trip down the court. Pina with a personal six-point run. That time, it was an even time who just decided, I'm open, I might as well take it. 35-32 BU, 114 remaining first half. Ava McGee in for Boston College for the first time. Van Timmeren, back to her right. Oh, it was a good move, just couldn't finish, but got the rebound and put back. First two for Van Timmeren. Like the aggressive post move, had a smaller defender, Davenport on her. Missed once, not twice. Pina again. That time short. First miss for Pina in the game. And then Mayer threw a fastball to Daly, who did manage to collect it, but called for the offensive foul. Before that charge, this is Van Timmeren in the post. Just rolled off once. Left-handed player, no problem going on the left side. That was an offensive foul call, but Joanna Burnaby McNamee was very, very angry about. Didn't like it. 
Another three ball not there. And even time. Tell you what, BU's done a, a really good job, Eric, in taking charges here in this opening half. That's a big reason that BC's had some foul problems. Gak has been on the bench after she picked up an offensive foul. And Timmerin on two for BC as well. Wagner, got it! With four seconds remaining in the first half, 10 for Dontavia Wagner. And then the half court heave, not there for BU. So it will be a one point lead for Boston College. 36 35 to the half. And there are some of your scoring leaders with Maggie Pina, all 12 points from the three point line. And Dontavia Wagner for Boston College, 10.6 rebounds. Boston College has not lost when trailing at halftime this year, so that shot late from Wagner was big. Pina had to pass up the three for the long two, and it's good for 14 points for how, Maggie Pina. How about the shot fake? You obviously know that she's a, a marked woman. Had Dontavia Wagner flying at her, so she just faked the shot. Took an easier step in, too. Barriers the lead back by one. Wagner one on two and got it. 12 for Wagner. Efficient too. Six out of nine from the floor. It's kind of her sweet spot there. Anywhere in the mid range to the mid post. Eagles extended the defense a bit. Sets up Davenport. Couldn't get the friendly roll. Out of bounds and off BU. Well, you just heard Coach Graves praising Crisp in her start today in place of Weimer. Battling inside, first start of that freshman's career. Melissa Graves, who played her college ball at Notre Dame, as an assistant at Colgate, Yale, and most recently Wake Forest in the ACC. Now in her second year as the head coach of BU. Terriers on the run. Davenport saw the double team. Here is Johnson. Cutting inside, it was stripped late by Mayer. Good hands by Taina Mayer. Watch this, I almost thought for a moment she hit it off of Johnson. Yeah, I think she may have. I don't see who touched this one last. And this one is off of BU, Sam Crisp. Yeah, I think Maybe it was missed the first time, but not the second time there on a knockaway by the BC defense right inside the paint. It was going to be a turnover ultimately anyway. And another one turned over. This time to BU. Johnson, little no-look handoff. Pina stripped. It was Andrea Daly. Well, they're not going to try leaving Maggie Pina alone again. So watch Daly blitz out at her. Then looked like Pina had a step to the basket. Good recovery. Yeah, especially on that look. That was a really good read to not fall for kind of the ball to take off the pass. And Pina was not set up for the three. Wagner tripped up by Johnson. And thankfully was okay see that one coming for a while. I tried to keep her balance for a couple of steps, but... Eric, how do you average four steals a game? You play like that. Yep. I mean, that's just textbook defense. Denying the pass. She got there before the BU player. The second foul on Johnson, by the way, and then another foul here inside will send Maria Kekting to the line. It's just so impressive, going back to Dontavia Wagner. Her instincts defensively always seems to be in the right spot. And that last steal, that was a perfect example of it, the way that she is such a disruptor on that defensive end. Akdang, who had to sit for a good portion of that first half, picking up two fouls fairly early on. That's her first point of the game. It's a part of her game that she'll be working on, no doubt, only a sophomore. Under 50% from the charity stripe on the season. But with 
The post presence she provides, she's going to be going to the free throw line, you figure, quite a bit. Oh, man, Another she did it steal. again. This time, Wagner gives it off. Daly waited and scored. Nine for Daly. Wagner now with her second assist. Three ball. Davenport is good. Hit a three early. And now up to eight points on her second three-pointer. That dang inside was too strong. Nice move. Made that drop step. Got her a good look. Once off Boston College. Still at a one-point game, this time at 41 to 40. By the way, that was the fourth steal for Wagner, so back on her season average. And here's a player who is right behind her in the ACC leaders in Mayer getting one. Lacey for three. And good. JoJo Lacey up to 12 points. Her fourth three-pointer. And that ties an Eagles season high with six made threes for the team. That's going to be three on Maria yeah. Gagtang. A little too aggressive there, defending the interior against Durant. Going back to numero cuatro, JoJo Lacey. She's been confident from the outset here today with that stroke. Four of the six that the Eagles have hit from long range. We've talked about it. That's not their strength, three-point shooting. But it's been the reason that they've been able to build a lead here in this game against BU. It's notable, not just because, as you said, second game in a row with six, but BU coming in had been a pretty good defensive team. They're, they've held their opponents just 25% shooting from behind the arc. That was Pina going hard into Mayer. Good hands by the freshman. Defending without fouling, almost stole the ball. Talk so much about Dontavia Wagner's ability to take it away. Mayer is right there with her. Good call by the official. Just an out-of-bounds play on. Only one second on the shot clock. Watch for a lob inside here. Durant's got some size and advantage over Van Timmeren, who's guarding her. There's some, looks like some blood that they will check on with Sydney Johnson. As you said, 1.3 seconds remaining on the possession timer. They're just going to go ahead and take Johnson out of the game, yeah. Senior leader of these Terriers. Again, watch on this inbounds baseline underneath. You got a size advantage like BU does. They've got both Crisp and Durant taller than any BC player on the court. You figure that there's some sort of lob play coming in right towards the rim. And now everybody's sent back to their respective sides. And both coaches will be allowed to diagram something. And it looks like we're being told there's blood on the basketball, so that's why want to be the one that the ref's handing it to, but <laughs> so they will get a new ball. Good game, huh? Contrast of styles. Two good New England programs. You see the blood on the ball right there. Step aside for 30 seconds. 618 remaining in the third. Four-point lead, Boston College. We love our new home. There's so much space. But we have ants. Expired. 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 It's a lot of house. I hope you can keep it clean. At least GEICO makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. This is 100% fresh beef. With two slices of melted cheese, pickles, onions, ketchup, and mustard. This is a burger that strongly suggests you take a seat. It marks its territory, leaving behind a graveyard of napkins and can't, no, won't be contained by humble sesame seed bun. 
This is the Quarter Pounder with Cheese. So set to go once again, 44-40. Austin College the lead. BU inbound. Remember, there was just 1.3 on the timer. That was good work to get a decent look. And it was also well defended there by Boston College. They knew exactly what BU was trying to do, and they clogged up the middle. So then Pina ended up popping it there over into the corner for the jump. By the way, BU did check Sidney Johnson back into the game. So 14 and red is in as we play on six minutes remaining in the third. There, good quick pass for Van Tiberen inside. Boy, that's an excellent play by the freshman. And BC took advantage of a size mismatch there. Ended up with the littlest player on the court for BU, Pina. Wild try, and it is a blocking foul. Sam Crisp will draw the foul. This is taking advantage of a mismatch. See Mayer noticing? Call that mouse in the house. And Timmerin several inches over Pina. No problem to finish once the good entry pass was delivered. Now on the other end, that's three on Ali Van Timmerin. So for Boston College, three on Maria Gagdang, three on Ali Van Timmerin. And we're going to see Ali Carmen check in for the first time here. Boston College has eight available players today. That's it. So you only got three subs that even warmed up for this game. I told you earlier. Injuries that occurred this week to Tiana Todd and Kayla Lazama. And this is the last of those available Eagles to get into the game in Ali Carmen. Eight have played each way. There is Tiana Todd, the freshman. He's averaging 11 points a game for Boston College. Wagner, a little bit short on the floater. Tough shot, made it tough, going off of one foot. Another three try. That's good. Liz Sheehan up to a season high eight points. BU back within one. Every time you think Boston College establishing a bit of control, they've come right back with a counter. Speaking oh, of a counter, my. JoJo Lacey. That was one for the thumb, Eric. Yeah. Johnson on the run on the other end. Seven for Sydney Johnson. And back and forth we go. 49-47, Boston College up. Here's Lacey on the drive. Right hand comes off. Here's Crisp down the floor, got it up and good. That time Crisp beat Carmen down the floor and we're tied again, 49 apiece. That's exactly what it was. Carmen just couldn't keep up with that freshman. Beat her to the spot there for the layup. And this is turned over. It's Johnson on the steal. Terriers back on top. Nine for Johnson. BU is six of seven from the floor in this third quarter. BC not too shabby, five for nine on the other side. Now six for 10. Mm. It's just a back and forth punch, counter punch. These two teams, if you go by the advanced numbers, we're both in the 93rd percentile nationally in defensive rating over their last five games. Uh, don't think this is what we expected. There's There's though defense. it's a block. Yeah, but JoJo Lacey, huh? Crisp pulls up. And Mayer comes out of the rebound. Daly all alone. Here's Sheehan on the run. And Daly there again. It's out of bounds off BC, so it'll stay here when we come back. A two-point lead for Boston College. 
both teams shooting 60% in this third quarter. You are watching V Week on ACC Network. With the award winning Geico mobile app, our Bill customer has joined the call. Hey, Bill, we're just. Hi, uh, guys. Uh, do we have Julia on the line, too? Okay, hey, well, we'll, we'll. Sorry. Okay, we'll. we'll, we'll you, I, um, right, the award winning Geico app. This is 100% fresh beef. With two slices of melted cheese, pickles, onions, ketchup, and mustard. This is a burger that strongly suggests you take a seat. It marks its territory, leaving behind a graveyard of napkins. And can't, no, won't be contained by a humble sesame seed bun. This is the Quarter Pounder with Cheese. The getaway sales event is going on now at the all-new South Charlotte Hyundai. When the weather gets colder, the deals get hotter. With leases on Hyundai starting as low as $219 a month, you're not going to want to miss out. We have over 200 new Hyundais available right now, ready for you to drive home today. Each new vehicle comes with America's best warranty, plus three years of complimentary Hyundai maintenance with Hyundai Assurance. A grand opening, a grand sales event, and a grand selection of vehicles. All of this going on now at the all-new South Charlotte Hyundai. Hey, Peloton, step into your power. Let's go. Ah, you didn't come to work out. You came to our work. Let's get it. Yo. Boom. Do what's do what's for. Minus come on, you got this. Minus. Every day, man's on the hey, floor. Hey, no C, challenge, no man. change. The ting goes. Let's go. Let's get it, keep it. Get up to $600 off Peloton packages. Terms apply. At Walmart, save on thousands of gifts for everyone on your list. The savings are here all month long. Plus, get delivery on your gifts in as fast as one hour, right up to Christmas Eve. Shop Walmart online or in-store today. Let your love story begin with the perfect ring from Sales, the diamond store. It is BC and it is BU and what a third quarter this has turned into with both teams shooting the ball and turning people over, especially here on the BU side of late. Yeah, this is all in the last minute of play. Couple of buckets for BU. BC coming back with two buckets in a row. Wagner, the tough finish. And a leak out for Andrea Daly. And a total of... 33 points scored in this third quarter alone. And Boston College just clinging on to this two-point lead. It's never really expanded much past four here recently. We're kind of hanging around between four and two. It's been a one-point game quite a bit. Both teams have led. It has been a fun one. Inside, that is an offensive foul. And... I can tell you Melissa Graves isn't going to like it, but that's the way that Linda Miles has been calling these plays the entire game. When there's been any sort of elbow or shoulder contact by the offensive player, it's been called a charge consistently all game. That had to be the call because, well, that's the way it's been going throughout the first three quarters of the game. And by the way, that's three fouls on Marin Durant for BU. So... Foul trouble may become an issue as this game plays on. 2.24 remaining in the third. And Van Timmeren came back in at the timeout for Carmen. Bailey shot, no. Wagner got an offensive board. Three ball to match. Oh, it's good. Liz Sheehan who came in having not scored more than four points in a game this year, Josh, has 11 and has knocked down three from downtown. Good looking jump shot though. We're gonna pick up Durant here. Little nickel and dimer, that's gonna be her fourth foul, Eric. That's a huge call. Back to Dontavia Wagner with point number 16. Three for three from long range. I don't think she's hit the rim. Any of them. Lacey, nice play off the inbounds. And that is a new career high for JoJo Lacey. 17 points 
and BC back up three. And just keep an eye on what BU does defensively now with Durant, their defensive stud, on the bench with those four fouls. BC got a pretty clean look as soon as she just went out. Got away with a carry there. It's around Sheehan again. Late in the timer, good! Oh my, Liz Sheehan. 14 points. Again, that is 10 more than she's had in a game at any point this year. Van Temeren may have gotten away with an elbow that time. Couple of tries on the rebound. Out of bounds to BU. Two good looks. That second one, she rushed it just a little bit there. Had some more time to collect herself and go back up. Boston College trying to figure out a way to slow down Sheehan. Johnson driving. Ended up against a double team. Crisp got the rebound and was fouled. That's going to be four on Van Timmeren. By the way, just a few moments ago, we also had the fourth foul on Marin Duran. As you mentioned, so where we are right now in terms of the foul situation, and again, you have to, not that everything's about the injuries, you love the, you know, next player up mentality, but Durant filling that void right now inside that we've talked about with Weimer being out, and similar on the other side for BC, down a body or two, the foul situation becomes more pressing than even normal. Here you see the BC interior players. That was a crafty move, by the way, by Maggie Pina to get herself to the line. BC hasn't let her get a look from beyond the arc here in the third quarter, so she's adjusted her game and started driving. 16 for Maggie Pina. BU leads by two. Has not even attempted a three-pointer this quarter, has Pina. Inside for Gakdang. Kept it alive while being fouled. In a second on Sam Crisp. Yeah, BC in the bonus here. Nice play by Gakdang. Watch this. She was being fouled anyway, but she somehow kept that ball in play. Had they not blown the whistle, that would have saved the possession there for the Eagles. on the free throw. Eagles are just four of eight from the foul line. See just one point today and made a field goal. Couple of free throws for her two points. As we said, missed a lot of time in the first half in foul trouble. EU leads by one, timer off. Nice extra pass, but the travel. And BC, similar to the end of the second quarter, will have a shot here at the end of the third to potentially take the lead. That was a good play too. Crisp, just a little bit of a happy feet situation. Lacey puts it up late, and the timer off the rim. Had a little more time, Eric. She could have taken another two, three, or four dribbles, probably. Wow, this has been fun. We've had 11 lead changes. One point lead, BU, end of three. Welcome to the neighborhood. Now, did you know that Geico could help with your homeowner's insurance? Hmm. Cookies. Oh, it's my mum's secret recipe. Team, that's 71%. That is a number you don't see often. And I know that too many of them for Joanna Burnaby McNamee's liking have been open looks. Important minutes here for freshman Ava McGee for Boston College at the start of the final quarter. Good call. It's from behind on Crisp. And that's now three on Crisp. I mean, it, the, the foul thing. Remember, we have a whole quarter here still to go when we're talking about these numbers. Good catch, nice play. The Eagles have had a couple in a row off the inbound. 
well-designed plays, and that's the first field goal of the game for Maria Gakdak. And they made a concerted effort there, obviously, in the timeout between the third and fourth quarters to say, hey, we're going to get Maria Gakdak some post touches. Went to her once, got fouled, went to her twice, and she scored. Johnson, pull up. No. And Taina Mayer with the rebound. Mayer on the run. Got it. Ooh. That's a high degree of difficulty on the finish. Double figures for the fourth time in the last six games for Taina Mayer and one assist from a double-double. We talk about having your body contorted as you're throwing up the shot. Loose change here, Bill Raftery would say. A hand check there on McGee. Take a look at this shot. On her way to the basket, the freshman Taina Mare. Woo! Throwing it up over your shoulder. Practice that one in the backyard. That is another chance for Sydney Johnson. Workman like 11. By the way, Aaron Durant is back into the game for BU, playing with four fouls here with 8.30 to go. Mayer on the drive, right into Durant. Gakdang the follow and makes it. It's a great point, Eric, because Durant may be a little hesitant to fully attack a shot. She is a great shot blocker, but playing with four personals, BC went right at her. We got a couple of good looks. Durant on the other end. You don't have to have such hesitation when you're playing offense. She went right back at Maria Gekdeng. Six points, ten rebounds, five assists, and four fouls for Durant. 64-63 Boston College. You going to a zone here. I think trying to protect Durant. Back dang three on the timer. It was open at the free throw line. Another offensive rebound, and that's going to be called a jump ball, which gives possession to BU. Dontavia Wagner has been ferocious attacking the offensive glass in this game. That's a good call there. Lauren Davenport got her hands across the basketball, Eric. That was a held ball. And it gives the Terriers possession. Down one. And an offensive foul, and that is five on Durant. I tell you what, that same official who called it, Linda Miles, she's been the one calling just about all of these offensive fouls all day. And as I was talking about a few minutes ago, at least she's been consistently doing it. Let's see. Yeah, little bit of a shove into Gaktang with the left that, arm yep, too that coming around. Arm. Melissa Graves. Disgusted. Really all you ask for out of an official in any sport is to be consistent. And I think you would say that it has been that way throughout the game yep. today. Gakdang inside, lost the handle, got it back. Managed to cycle the offense again. Lacey on the run, and the foul. That's been a career day for the junior out of Douglasville, Pennsylvania. Not sure where the contact was, to be honest with you. But give her the continuation. Now, if you're Boston University, you are in large position where you've been first place preseason of the Patriot League because of your interior players, Marin Durant, Caitlin Weimer. They are both out for the remainder of this game. And you got to try to figure out a way to win on the road. Melissa Graves is going to do just that. She calls for time. BC leads by four. Okay, I'm an alien. If you're making a sci-fi movie, you need to finish the special effects. Does that look good? And if you want to save by bundling home and car insurance, you need Geico. Uh -oh. Celebrate this moment and every moment. The Every Moment Collection, only at K. I'm falling in love with you over and over again. 
This is 100% fresh beef. With two slices of melted cheese, pickles, onions, ketchup, and mustard. This is a burger that strongly suggests you take a seat. It marks its territory, leaving behind a graveyard of napkins. And can't, no, won't be contained by a humble sesame seed bun. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. What are you doing here? that inspires. stop playing. You get the most from the game when you're having fun. Way back when. What a day for JoJo Lacey for Boston College. 20 points, five three-pointers. She's been terrific from the get-go. Started it early and has continued. Teeing it up from all over. I love the last basket here, too. This that time, putting it on the floor and trying to get to the basket. Scoring through the contact and one. It was only her second make of the day, Eric, that wasn't a three-pointer. Talked about based an injury after arriving on campus, and that still affected her last year as well, getting the confidence back to be able to play through a serious injury. Here, it's another offensive foul against BU. That's Davenport there, trying to get an offensive rebound. And Ashley Gloss says that she pushed off in order to do it. A second foul on Lauren Davenport. Eagles lead by four. 6.32 to go. Gak Dang oh, did a nice job to wait Chris out before finding the opening for her eighth point. About three for four here in the fourth quarter from the field for Maria Gak Dang after not hitting a shot from the field over the first three quarters. They have made it a point to use her presence inside. Mayor is so, stay here. so good at getting her hands on the ball without fouling. I think worth pointing out too, Eric, it's 5-0 Boston College since the foul against Durant that fouled her out of the game. And in fact, the Eagles are up by six right now. This is one point shy of DC's largest lead in the game. So we've, we've really played in a 13-point spread. BU led 10-4 at one point, BC 19-12. Otherwise, we've been inside it. And a foul here goes against BU. They gave that to Mayor. I thought that was going on Gak Dang. Yeah, your pardon, Fallon, on BC. Second on Mayor. Yeah. Gak Dang, that would have been a problem for Boston College. Would have been her fourth. <laughs> Worth noting, though, Gak Dang's played on three here for a while and has not picked up that fourth. And she's been the biggest reason that they've been able to build this lead here in the fourth quarter thus far. Long way to go, though. Get the feeling, even shorthanded, these Terriers are not going anywhere. Number BU without 
Caitlin Weimer today, BC without Deanna Todd and Kayla Lazama. Mayer. No good, but the rebound is found by Wagner. And that ties a career high 18 points for Dontavia Wagner. That is six offensive rebounds today for Dontavia. And we're talking about the career high. Got to go back and look. I think she has scored a basket on at least three of those offensive rebounds right away, just putting it back up and in. Second chance points are 14-9 in favor of BC. Three ball, Sheehan, oh my, again. 17 points for Liz Sheehan. To answer no, a little quick. She's had a good shot selection much of the afternoon. Not sure that Coach McNamee is going to like that one there from JoJo Lacey. Johnson gives it inside for Crisp, who is fouled. And that's the third on Tyena Mayer. Uh, Eric, we were talking about Dontavia Wagner doing it on the offensive glass, and it has been consistent throughout part of her 18-point day. Watch her go after the ball and put it right back up once. That's early. Twice. And continuing it here in the fourth quarter. Push her own teammate out of the way. Boston College clinging to a three-point lead. Five minutes to go. We love our new home. There's so much space. But we have ants. Expired. 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 It's a lot of house. I hope you can keep it clean. At least GEICO makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. I have something for you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I have something for you, too. It's the holidays. Get 3.9% APR and no monthly payments for 90 days on turbo high output engine Sierra light duty models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get 2,500 purchase allowance. This is 100% fresh beef. With two slices of melted cheese, pickles, onions, ketchup, and mustard. This is a burger that strongly suggests you take a seat. It marks its territory, leaving behind a graveyard of napkins. And can't, no, won't be contained by a humble sesame seed bun. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. You do what feels right, then own your style. Philips One Blade, your style made simple. There's always a way to make life better. In a world where Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus join forces, action is a way of life. Drama is around every corner, and suspense is literally the name of a street. It's right next to Comedy Avenue. The Disney Bundle, Town. It's not a real place. It's three very real streaming services bundled together. Get it all with the Disney Bundle. This ring is a commitment. After we got married, I got very sick. He will come every day to help me walk again. And now I'm back. This is a reminder that love endures all. Express your extraordinary love. Jared, love brilliantly. Members of the Boston College volleyball team, Izzy Clavenna and Nikki Steinheiser, part of a 21-win season. Set a new program record yesterday with a win over St. John's in the second round of the NIVC. We'll have the third round of the NIVC coming up on Wednesday night. You can catch that right here on ACC Network Extra. So our congratulations to the Boston College volleyball team. What a job by Jason Kennedy, their head coach. It's a tough league to play in, in the ACC. Had some big wins in the regular season. Now doing it postseason. One point game again, huh? BU with five in a row. They just won't go away here today. 
This has been some kind of game. Both teams are over their season average offensively, by the way. Both teams average about 66 points a game. Gakdang inside, dribble, double team. Comes, got rid of it to Wagner. That was great presence there from Gakdang, recognizing the double team. You said it earlier. When you're being doubled, you know somebody's open. And that person was Dontavia Wagner. 20 points. High pass for Johnson. Saved it for a moment. Folks, it is V Week, as we've talked about on ESPN, where we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. Remember, 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Block by Gakdang. Daly on the run, and the foul! Well, it was a good finish by Andrea Daly, but it started as it often does for Boston College with Maria Gakdang rim protecting. Great body control, blocked the shot without fouling. And a little body bump by Pina, unable to deter Daly from scoring. That foul was on Pina, her first. Eagles get it back though off an offensive rebound. She didn't realize it at first, was still out of bounds, comes back in the play and now it's turned over. Oh boy, that was a carry. Davenport lucky she didn't get called for a turnover there. Johnson hands off and then Marin Crisp got caught and it's a foul call. And if that's Mayra, that's four. Yeah, it is. It's four fouls on Taina Mayer. And as much as we've talked about the foul issues inside, that on the foul for Mayer being in foul trouble actually might be the most important part of this game because as we've talked about a lot this year with Boston College, she's the Eagles' only point guard. I think Boston University got a little bit fortunate on this possession. They're able to turn it into two points. Let's take a look at this carry. Couldn't see it there, but there's the foul that was called. It looked like maybe a tie-up. Wagner inside, and the foul! Career game for Dontavia Wagner. And a little bit of a yell afterwards. 22 points. Big shots late in the game. And a big three-point play for BC. All of a sudden up by six. So a career high 23 for Wagner. Career high 20 for Lacey. And 78-72. And this matches, as we said, that six-point edge that the Eagles Managed to get to one other time here in the fourth quarter. Their largest lead of the game, seven. That foul against JoJo Lacey. And it was holding on to Pina. It was cutting away from the ball. Each team's in the bonus the rest of the way. So we're going to have a lot of free throws, you figure, over the final 3-18. The U is a 71% shooting free throw team on the year. The Eagles, 67. The U has been outstanding from the line today. Sorry, Josh. 15 of 16 from the stripe. You beat me to it. Look at those numbers. Seventy-eight, seventy-four. 74 Looking to feed Gakdeng again. That's been the strategy here, Eric, in the fourth quarter, and especially once Marin Durant fouled out. Got a freshman guarding Gakdang and Crisp. Now she's got four personals. Nothing that Durant can do about it. Where Gakdang, who was in foul trouble for most of the first half. So it took a little while to get her points. 
But she has been huge in the fourth quarter and remembers played the whole fourth quarter on three fouls. That's missed a couple at the foul line. Follow up though off another offensive rebound for Boston College and Dontavio Wagner. That was her eighth offensive rebound. And this is just Will. She wanted this ball a little bit more than did Davin Davenport, who was there in position to grab it for the Terriers. Now the free throw number is starting to be a real issue here for Boston College. Just seven of 15, now seven of 16 from the foul line, but the Eagles nearly had another offensive rebound, but a foul was called. Boy, that was a disastrous possession there for BC because they missed four free throws. Yeah. They went 0 for 4, and then they commit a foul 90 feet from the basket. You're sending a team that's 15 for 16 from the line today right back to the stripe. Third foul on Daly. Whichever way this goes, this is going to be clawing to the finish. Which feels odd to say in a game where both teams are likely going to get to 80 points. Crisp with a new career high, by the way. It's up to 14 points. About 8 of 8 at the line for the freshman in her first career start. Three new career highs set in this game and a, and a season high as well. Jack Day just kind of throws it up and be you a chance to tie or even take the lead. Terriers have not led in the fourth. We have a tie game. 13 for Johnson. Pretty impressive BU able to do this without their big players that are normally on the court at the end of the game. Wagner got it to go. 25 points for Dontavia Wagner. Speaking of impressive, that was an eight or nine on a scale out of 10 for the degree of difficulty. Chris waited after getting Lacey in the air and Chris matches. 80, 80, two minutes left. Gakde again against Chris. Got to the spot that time. And Maria Gakde, despite not scoring in the first half, is in double digits. That's what they've wanted to do, exploit that matchup the fourth quarter. Gakde versus the freshman. That time she made a great move. Johnson stops on the run and a rebound down to Daly. She felt the presence of Gakde that time on the shot. Even though Maria didn't get a block, she certainly altered it. Air was on the floor behind the play. 107 left, Eagles lead by two. Wagner got position again. 27 for Dontavia Wagner. And nearly had another steal. This would be a good time for a timeout for BU. Oh, they didn't call it, they gave it up. Lacey with 40 seconds to go. The lead is six and a Terriers timeout. I think they were a little late in that timeout, Eric. You can see that possession was disjointed from the outset. Let's go back to Dontavia Wagner. Game tied on the run. That's the one I said, eight or nine out of 10 degree of difficulty. And then, a little lob inside. Good position to finish 27-point career-high afternoon. Worth noting, BU touched the lead, right? They tied it, but never took the lead in this fourth quarter. So the Eagles, despite the Terriers continuing to come, have not fallen behind, and what a game for Dontavia Wagner. A double-double, 27 points, 10 rebounds. Add seven of those rebounds on the offensive boards. Four assists and four steals. 
and has played every minute. She scored 11 points in this quarter alone. Five out of five from the floor in the fourth quarter. And after that tie game, Boston College 6-0 run here in the last minute. So 40.8 seconds to go. Remember off the timeout, the ball advances into the front court. I figure this is probably a three-point attempt coming up. Got to look out for Pina here if you're Boston College. Terriers can't control it. Lacey Daly with the active hands. It's been such a good offensive effort most of the afternoon for BU, but this is back-to-back -back turnovers. And, and they, certainly Davenport hit it last there. Yeah, they will look to just be sure. The previous play is on the And they will see if, did it touch Daly's foot on the way by? Obviously a huge moment. I said it hit Davenport last. She's certainly the last player to at least get a hand on it. Right there, and then... Yeah, there's the hand. Does it in unintentionally hit the foot? Oh, yeah, maybe it did. Hard to tell if that hits the left foot of number 21 in gold or it just hits the floor. Kind of need the second angle, right, to piece it together. And it looks like they are going to keep the... Call on the floor that it is Boston College ball. The officials can have different angles available to them that we don't have access to showing you. They were pretty quick in that review, so they may have seen something pretty conclusive to say the call had been confirmed. It did look like on the depth that that ball was far enough away from the foot. But back-to-back but -back turnovers at the end of the game. BC is going to call timeout. BU had done a much better job over the last couple of quarters taking care of possession. But here in the final minute of the game, turning it over twice. Boston College after this will take on ACC play and the ninth ranked Virginia Tech Hokies, which of course remains, means the return of Taylor Soule who spent her undergraduate career with Boston College, a grad transfer with Virginia Tech. That game is a 6 o'clock start on ACC Network. This is not the last non-conference game. It's just the final non-conference game before the first ACC game. The Eagles will jump back in non-conference with U Albany on Saturday at 2 o'clock here on ACC Network Extra. Try to finish this one. BU will foul. Remember, both teams are in the bonus and Taina Mayer will go to the line. And at least one more time, Josh, we mentioned the free throw point. The Eagles are the exact same seven of 16 from three and from the line today. 68% free throw shooter on the season. But you figure you get these two and yep. the rest don't matter quite as much. Boy, this has been a, a back and forth game with so many punch counter punch moments. It looks like the final big punch that's going to be the decisive one is from Boston College. They've scored eight straight points here, and it's taken them just under two minutes to do that grab control. Yeah, there's a lot of things worth noting, pointing out down the stretch here. But, you know, we've talked about Wagner, we've talked about Lacey, both setting career highs. But how important for Boston College, again, because of the foul trouble and taking advantage of Caitlin Weimer being out, Maria Gakdang picked up that third foul, but then never got the fourth and was able to score through it in the process here late. And no question, Boston College does not win this game without Gakdang's presence on the court in the fourth quarter, and she's been able to be out there for the entire final 10 minutes. This has been a fun game to watch, though. 88-80. And again, these two teams, remember, offensively average 66 and 65 points a game, respectively. Sheehan, off the side of the backboard, got it back, but could only throw it to Lacey. Timer is off, and Boston College can hold on to possession and run it out, and they will indeed call the foul on Sheehan. 
and the Eagles can clinch it at the line. Heck of an effort for both teams today and for Boston University trying to win a second game in a row against Boston College and doing so shorthanded today. Both teams down a key player. Couple at the line for Daly. And another timeout here late by BU. Down by 10 with 16 seconds remaining. It is a 10-0 run late here for Boston College. A career highs for a couple of players that have stepped into big roles this season. Dontavia Wagner, she's done so many of her contributions late in this game. JoJo Lacey hitting five three-pointers en route to 22 points. About 49 combines from those juniors. Wagner's second year with Boston College and Lacey in her third, but really neither of them had all that many opportunities with the previous crop of BC players exhausting most of the minutes the last couple of years. Now they have had to step it up, and boy have they done so in a big way here today in a very difficult local non-conference game. And for two players in Wagner and Lacey, not relied on to be scoring threats last year, but needed to be relied on as scoring threats this year for Boston College. They have risen to the occasion this afternoon. Little give and go, and Pina off from three. One more rebound down to Daly, and Boston College is going to hold on. 90 to 80. The Eagles beat their rivals, BU. That's a game that's going to look like it was more lopsided than it really was. BC 10-0 in the final two minutes of this game. Before that, nobody had a double-digit lead the entire contest. But in a game that just kept going back and forth,